Labelled the godfather of rock, songwriter, musician and producer Lobby Lloyd was at the forefront of the Australian rock push in the early 70s, playing with Billy Thorpe and the Aztecs and cited as an influence by the likes of Nirvana's Kurt Cobain and Henry Rollins. And this is what everyone raved about. Oh yeah, his death last year at the age of 65 deprived Australia, Australian music of one of its truly innovative and inspirational forces. The last man to work with him, Michael Fain, joins us to remember Lobby Lloyd. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. Who, who, who was he? Why was he so innovative and inspirational, do you think? It's just his character. He, uh, he'd, he'd always be searching for great minds to work with. Uh, he wouldn't be like looking out for anyone to make a million dollars off. He, uh, he just wanted to work with great minds and inspire them. He said that he's, his greatest achievement is to sit in a back room with all the ideas people and inspiring them to find their own uniqueness and their own character and, and push for that. So a lot of the music obviously is a result of that of the artists that he's worked with. Yeah. They, uh, they came out as quite unique and they developed you know, huge followings which in turn other bands tried to replicate and so on and so forth. Yeah. That's why it's history. David mentioned that, uh, that he, he passed away last year and you were the last person to work with him in, in that collaboration and, and this is the album now. Mm -hmm. how, how did you come to work with him? Um, I'd met him uh, a few years before that and he was kind of always there for me and almost a mentor to me. And he, uh, he called me up one afternoon and said, uh, um, I'm looking at putting a new studio together and I'm looking at making records. I don't want to charge by the hour. He's like, I want to do it like, you know, real producers do it and this is the way that it should be done. And it's finding great songs and looking at, obviously, uh, spending as much time on them as possible. So, um, yeah, he goes, come in and play me a few songs and we'll see if you're the one for it. And he said he was auditioning a few other people. So, uh, you know, I walked in there and I, and I started playing a couple of songs and he sits back, you know, with his eyes shut and uh, just kind of really listens in across the fingers with a cigarette, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, that was his undoing. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. And, uh, and then at the end of all the songs, he just goes, done, start next week. And, uh, and did, you have a, did you have a band? And... I, not really. <laughs> I mean, I had been performing live, but I'd had problems back then with certain members of the band, and I said, I need this and I need that. And he's like, done, you'll meet them next week. So, so he just... What brought in the top musicians to work with you? That's right, yeah. And like as such as, was his influence. Yeah, it was amazing like that. And as it progressed on, you know, more artists kind of jumped in on it and uh, started to want to work with us. I mean, there was there was a song that when we were doing a sound check, because I, I pre-wrote most of the songs. Um, there was one song in particular that. I wrote and when we were doing a sound check I was mucking around with having a bit of a fool around and, and he said, what the hell is that? And uh, I said, it's a new song of mine, it's called Birthday. It basically says, you know, happy birthday, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and he said, well, you know, that's a hit. And I said, you're kidding me. And he goes, well, it's a hit. I can't believe you haven't seen that yet. I'm like, why? And he's like, well, everyone has birthdays. <laughs> 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 he just related it straight away. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, so how did we it, start it immediately. Mm. Before we talk about the sessions itself, let's, let's have a look. Uh, we've got a grab here of what uh, Lobby was uh, said about talking with you. Let's take a look. <laughs> I was just fucking dying before. Now I'm dying with a passion. <laughs> 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 Oh, seriously, you gave me a reason to stay alive. He was—he oh, was, he was very ill, wasn't he? Thing to say. He was. He was. He—he yeah. he had lung cancer, but as you can see in that clip there, he wouldn't—he wouldn't give up the fags. Wouldn't. He—he—he he, he was just passionate about the music, wasn't he? Totally, it inspired him. It really inspired him. Did he play guitar on on? your work? Well see that's the beautiful thing as, as I mentioned about a lot of the different artists he, he was really pushing to make sure that um, each song had his own uniqueness as, as I said and uh, in doing so there are a couple of songs on there that he said I love this song I don't trust any other guitarist to come in and play anything on it do you mind if I play guitar on it? Yeah, I just, like, do you mind? <laughs> I'm like, um, yeah, I mind, love you. <laughs> what was... What was, was I, I wanted to, in that same van, I want you to tell a story about... He, he had to listen to one particular song and he decided that it needed a rather unusual 
extra component to it. Drumming. That's right, yeah. He, he said, um, this, this song's fantastic. It reminds me of Rem. And I said, who's Rem? And he says, R-E-M, you know, idiot. You know? Yeah. I mean, we had a lot of fun in there and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, and he said, it also reminds me of some psychedelic Beatles kind of stuff as well. It's a good you know, collection there. And he said, but what it really needs is tabla. And I looked at him, I was kind of stunned by that. And he says, it needs a tabla player. We need to find a tabla player. So he started See, I don't even around. know what tabla is. Well, well I, I do know because I read the notes, but <laughs> I wouldn't have at the time. Yeah, it was, it was confusing to me as well. Because uh, I suggested getting in a, some sort of bongo or timbaleki player or something like that. Yeah. And he's like, no, 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 we want tabla, you know, and that's what it is. Where does one find a tabla player in Australia? Well, yeah, he started ringing around. He rang Gil Matthews, I'm pretty sure it was, that, that hooked him up with a uh, tabla player. Gil being the drummer that plays with the, uh, played with the coloured balls and the Aztecs. That's the one, yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah, and Gil, he, he was running Aztec Records at the moment, so he's doing some Lobby Lloyd releases, and uh, he, he helped out Lobby, yeah. What, with, was, it, what, was, it about, what was it it about Lobby as a guitar player? Because many cite him mm -hmm. as being the founder of the Australian rock guitar sound, before Angus Young, before, you know, any of them. Angus Young from ACDC. Yeah, sorry, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. What was it about his playing? Um, he just played harder and pushed it to, to more limits than any other guitarist at the time. I mean, there was one thing that, uh, that he used to say, which was, uh, I think he said it to Angry, yeah, Angry Anderson said this at the ARIA Hall of Fame induction when he was inducted. And you were there, that was That's lovely, right, yeah. I was, yeah. And uh, Angry said, um, one thing about Lobby Lloyd is that he told us back then when we were yeah, first starting cool. out that... Uh, you know, it, we'd have to play really loud and we'd have to, you know, really give it our go when we first came on stage because that would clear people's minds. It's like when people's minds are clear, then they can really start taking in the music. <laughs> it's like, and you can play what you want from there and it'll all make sense from there. And Angry, I think, you know, said we believed him at the time, you know. Because <laughs> uh, he, he, he did it. And Angry has tinnitus now because of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember going and seeing the coloured balls back in the 70s and they were extraordinarily loud. When I you mean, were a surfer dude. With, and that was the thing because I was a, I was a surfer dude with long, you know, white <laughs> surfer hair. Yeah, and I'd like to see that. He particularly appealed to the skinheads at the time. So it was, you, you went to see a Lobby Lloyd concert and took your life in your own hands. Really. Yeah, yeah. But he was Goodness an extraordinary, gracious. extraordinary performer and he always had a great band around him. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So this album that you've done with him, what's the latest for that? When's, when is that out? Um, well, we're doing the launch on the 23rd of August at Hi-Fi Bar. Which is in where? Melbourne? In Melbourne. Yep. That's right. And, uh, and then it'll be out within that week after, after the launch. Right, okay. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait to hear it now. <laughs> Look, it's, it's really good to talk to you. Yeah. Thank you so much for Thank coming in and sharing those me. Yeah. lovely, really lovely stories. It. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And we'll be right back after this. Keep watching to find out how you can win a year's